Warning, the following actual play may be considered disturbing by some audiences. This video may contain explicit language, violence, and depictions of trauma. This may not be suitable for viewers under the age of 18. Viewer discretion is advised. After days in the Astral Sea with his adult miniature dragon Ferrothai, Zeke settles down to practice scrying using the Astral Planes as a lens. After many attempts and only being met with failure, Zeke bends the local, around, local area around him to his will and focuses. A lens appears before Zeke in a vision of his Chelton mentor, Eshek Atuar, teaching Ilqua forms to his students. Practicing further, Zeke is able to get glimpses of what his friends have been up to. He scries on Laurel and sees the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. inside a small fortress fighting Duragar. Zeke then focuses on his young friend and protege, Maxwell. Zeke sees the Saxters rushing around Bryn Shander, escorting frightened people into once abandoned buildings. Focusing, focusing then onto Midge, Zeke sees her coordinating food and shelter for what Zeke assumes to be ten town refugees. Checking in on Elena, Zeke sees his companions inside an alien room with a gnome ceremony demonstrating their laser pistol. Trying to peer through the veil to spy on Disco, Zeke sees Disco Prime as clones working. Turning slowly, Disco Prime says, No spying now, and the spell ends. Checking in on Call, Zeke sees his friends dispatching the evil Durugar King. Remembering the Goliath bartender from East Haven, Bardavan, Zeke sees him crossing the tundra with a large group of commoners. Among them, he gets a quick glimpse of bright blue eyes. Sephic is among them. Becoming anxious about his friend's safety, Zeke checks on Farron. Sees Farron atop a stable, holding Kal's sword, Johnson, measuring the distance the Shardlin dragon must travel to arrive at East Haven. Checking on his friends again, Zeke sees Laurel as a Duergar get blasted by the Shardlin dragon, and Call falls lifeless to the ground. Deciding it was time to intervene, Zeke and Pharaoh create a portal to their friends. Back in East Haven, the showdown with the Shardlin dragon continues. Elena launches an acidic chromatic orb at the Shardlin dragon with such force that it exposes the infernal machine's beating heart. Baron takes a chance and leaps into the air to launch Call's Johnson at the Shardlin Dragon's heart. Call, with reckless abandon, locked, launches his new hammer at his foe's weak point. Laurel positions himself to catch Baron. The storm slows, and the wind stops. A bright purple shimmer appears, and Ferrothai carries Zeke onto the battlefield. As the portal dissipates, <laughs> Zeke's companions are bolstered and strengthened. Acting quickly, Zeke calls lightning down onto the Shardlin dragon. The dragon releases a second radiant explosion that knocks Farron unconscious. Laurel, already beneath him, catches the limp Farron with ease. Call races to his friend's side and administers a potion, bringing Farron back to consciousness. In an attempt to help the agents, Velen pulls the infernal machine to the ground with magic. Farron, conscious once more, heroically charges the dragon and viciously attacks its heart, dispatching the beast. As the beating heart of the Shardlin dragon stops, the resulting explosion set off a chain reaction that sees Farron charred and lifeless on the ground. Silence comes over the town as the agents of Shale look on in horror. Attempts at healing are made. Farron is gone. Hoping to help, Velen magically preserves Farron's body. Captain Arlagath rushes to the group to congratulate them on their victory, but then sees the gruesome scene. While checking Farron's body, Elena comes across a heart-wrenching letter to Farron's new family, the Agents of Shield. Laurel asks if there are any diamonds in town they could use to revive Farron, and the captain offers her family heirloom to her saviors. 
after a lengthy and emotionally charged discussion on the morality of, of reviving their friend, the party, excepting Zeke, decide to revive Varen the next morning. Praying to Sylvanas, begging him to bring Varen back, <coughs> Laurel casts Revivify on Varen. In the golden fields of his home, Varen plays with Yami. A calm that he has not known in a long time washes over him. A vision of his new family standing around his body becomes all-encompassing. He hears Laurel pleading for their friend to return. Deciding that his friends need him, Farron returns to his body. Laurel's magic heals many of Farron's wounds as he gasps back to life. Did, did the dragon trip me? Farron asks before passing out. After much healing, the group retreats to the White Lady Inn and gives Farron a soft bed to recover in. A number of hours of rest later, the group meets up in the inn's common area for a deep discussion as to whether or not who should be revived if they die. Zeke, only if the Nominati and Oro are still a problem. Elena, only to help ensure loose ends are tied. Laurel's initial response is no. Farron, only if he can help his friends. Call, as long as his friends have the means to give him the option to please do so. In typical Farron fashion, he tosses his bowl of stew at Call. I'm not dead anymore. Stop being sad. When we die, we deal with it. I'm not dead anymore. And that's where we pick up. So you're all still in the White Lady Inn uh, tavern common room with lunches at this point. Dinner? Dinner. Zeke. Dinner? Okay. Zeke. Tell yeah, them. Yeah, what's up? Tell them. Tell them what? Yeah, what's what? What did you do? In, what's on your you mind? Were... In the astral plane while you were gone and oh yeah so like i figured out how to use the astral plane to like look at things and i saw a sethic where right well oh yeah oh fair you're so smart um <laughs> so remember bardabin it's a steel trap up here <laughs> yes i remember bardabin Yes. Uh, so he was with Bardabin oh, going no. down a road. I, I'm assuming when you said they went to Bryn Chander, I'm assuming he's in Bryn Chander, but that was like, I don't know, whenever you made them leave. So it could be days. It's only, uh... It's not that that far from here to Bryn Chander. Uh, you can get there in one day. That was just a lot of dice pouring onto the floor. <laughs> what did you roll? Everything. <laughs> I got an 18. Total or natural? <laughs> well, let's go to Bridge Chander. Agreed. We should go. We should totally go. And then when we get there, I can I can look for him again. And if I can see him in Bridge Chander, then we can go for him. So you can you can use this uh, ability again that you learned. Yeah, but like if it fails, like I, you know, things might get weird. If it works, things will also get weird, but like we'll we'll figure it out either way. And um I can't use it like constantly cuz I'm pretty sure I would die. But you know, it's like a one-shot kind of deal and then I have to like recharge. And okay. then I can, like, use it again, but, like... Sure, sure that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Uh... I don't know where my stuff is. 
It's okay. Uh, yeah, I think it was like six hours. I'm, I'm missing my map. I think it was like six hours from uh, East Haven to Bryn Chander. You're muted. Well, then we can leave right now. Well, like, uh, I'm shove sorry. food in our that. mouth and we'll Might just... have another copy of it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't know where it was. Either. Where the hell's my copy? Okay, those are. Uh -oh. There we go. Five, 13. So it's 13 miles from East Haven to Bryn Shander. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, it would take you. That'd be. I think eight. it's like two miles. No. Six it's thir miles 13. Hour? Uh. On dog sled. It is three miles per hour. Three miles per hour. Oh, okay. Take you a little yeah. over three hours. Yeah. A little, okay, sorry, a little over four. All. A little over four hours. But it is late in the evening. Like yeah, but the, 6 or 7 p.m. What does that matter, though? Like, it's not even, like, oh, no, it's it is dark always outside. Dark. It's already dark. <laughs> Do we want to just travel there? Because... We're going to be traveling in the darkness no matter what. Um, I'm assuming the news has given us a nice jolt of adrenaline. So uh, <laughs> Elena is probably staring there and just like, yeah, let, yeah. We, should, we should probably go. Yeah. Okay. We should totally go. We should, we should totally go. Go. We should go. Before we go, I'd like to find <laughs> Captain Arlagath. Yeah, she she's in the... Uh... Uh, she's on shift inside the tavern, just kind of hanging out, just keeping an eye out. Uh, Farron's going to walk over, just almost sheepish. Uh, and he's going to grab his entire coin purse, and he's going to set it on the table in front of her. Um, thank you, and I have no right, but I need to ask for another favor, or two. Well, first of all, keep your money. You probably need it more than I do. I'm just here. You're doing whatever you're doing. What's the? What do you need? If I can do it, I can try. Uh, does the town militia have any spare armor of any kind? Yeah, we have a couple breastplates kicking around. I uh, I would be more than grateful for anything you had, and she, I can eventually return it. She snaps her fingers and calls him over, calls uh, the other guard that's by the door over. And she says, um, go, go grab, uh, go grab the, the breastplate from the top shelf. And he runs off and you all continue your, your meal and all that. After about five, ten minutes, he comes back and it is a polished brass, brass colored steel breastplate. And it is, it's just a breastplate, but it is nice looking. Better than nothing. <laughs> Um, one more thing is Velen poking around. I yeah, saw that. She's she, been up to. She's been up in her room a lot. She doesn't seem to like people. Well, because I have a re weird problem, and I'm saying this kind of loud so the party can hear me. Um, I left my rod like sixty feet in the air, and I can't get to it. you hear some steps coming down the stairs. Let me guess. You want me to send my owl to get it. Please? Or dispel magic or something like that. I mean, if I can just send the owl to do it, I'm not going to cast a spell. That's, that'd be a waste of resources. Yeah. So I can do that. Does this owl look suspicious? I don't know. Different from a normal owl at all? Uh, it looks like a snowy white barn owl. Oh. Very attentive okay. to Velen speaking, and if if Velen is not speaking, it is keeping an eye out. It seems quite attentive. Okay. It's cute. Insight check. On the owl or Velen? On the owl. Okay. That's a nat one. <laughs> it. <laughs> you might want to talk to Zeke about this one. Something's up with that owl. Oh, 
No. <laughs> Zeke, that's a pretty big owl. It's yeah? regular sized. It could it's almost just... be gnome sized. Can I can I make like a perception it's, check? It's mm -hmm. awfully watchful for an owl. I mean owls are kinda of watchful, but it's really watchful. Uh twenty one. You've been around wizards and wizards familiars before. Wizards familiars are generally more intelligent seeming than natural versions of whatever animal they take the, the, the form of. So it seems, you know, on it's normal. Can I make an insight check into Laurel to see if she's trying to pull my leg? Sure, absolutely. That's a 20 on the die. <laughs> uh, Laurel is real sus about this owl. I'm real suspicious. What's that? What, like, what about the owl? You know? It's, like, watching everything. Yeah, I mean, I'm also watching everything. It's the eyes. But I mean, it. <laughs> Load him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, forget the owl. Forget the owl. Forget the owl. No, 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 no. You're like, it's bothering you. I just want to. I'll you... keep an eye on it. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I'll keep an eye on it too, but it, it looks okay. the same. Can I, looks... I insight check both of them why they're so <laughs> concerned about this damn owl? Sure. Um, and a, as you're doing that, Velen is walking out the door, but the owl has just not stopped watching eyes on uh, Laurel and Zeke as if it might hear and understand what you're saying. And she That's a 21 the on the, the owl watchers. Y'all feel the free to answer what you... <laughs> what was it? A 21? 21. I just... Why, why are you two so obsessed with the owl? You just you just suspect Zeke's normal curiosity for odd things. No Minati. I mean, yeah, he just he's always being watchful. Uh yeah, and Farron, you noticed Laurel uh reacting quite uh off put to Velen. And so she, Laurel's just kind of suspicious of Velen and her motives, especially with this whole necromancy thing. Fair. So it's like, are any of us going to talk about the weird shit that went on? Like, how you guys got a dragon to fight? And then, like, well, Laurel yeah. was a Dwergar? And... You fought the dragon with us. And then I saw you, like, kill that Dwergar? And, oh, and there was, there was gnomes... Sized. Zeke was there for when we uh, when he man. released the Kraken, if you will. Right. I just um, not actually a Kraken, just a turn of phrase. The dra the whole dragon getting loose was not intended. We really hoped to put that to an end before it took flight. Um, that's not what happened. Unfortunately. And Laurel is really good at imitation, but I'm gonna let Laurel take that because that's not my story to tell. Yes, I am very good at imitation. Uh Laurel, you would notice Zeke's squinty eyes and just like We should get to Bryn Shander. Yes, we should totally get to Bryn Shander. And he's just staring at you. Laurel walks. They walk away. <laughs> They're like, I can't deal with this. In quite the trying to escape an uncomfortable social situation. As one does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they go to prepare the dogs. 
so you all are able to finish up your meals and the time that Laurel uh, takes off to go set up the dogs. Uh, Farron, you get your new armor strapped on, all good to go. Uh, and Captain Arlegath looks to you all. Because of you, we can rebuild. Yeah. Thank you. And she she reaches out to each of you individually to shake to shake your hands. Uh, uh when when she shakes my hand, I'm gonna hold it a second longer and say, Because of you, I'm alive. I think the debt is paid. Because of you we're all alive. Not I think we're pretty square. Well, we are. There were casualties, but they fought well to defend their home. They died warriors' deaths, and they will be honored and remembered. Their deaths meant that the rest of the town can live. What about Dugan's Hole and Goodmead? Some sacrifices will take a lot longer to recover from. Right. Uh, Call, as she goes to shake your hand, uh, I'd like you to make an insight check. Let me know if you roll bad. <laughs> that luck. You say insight? Mm hmm. That is a 18 for a 17. She grasped your arm strong like your father did, like the other sailors did. But then there's a softness to it, and you see a small bit of a smile as she lets go. And she looks to you all, and Kala, you can tell she mentions a little bit of this to you. I hope to see you all again. Use you are well. definitely a welcoming sight, that's for sure. Thank you. So are you. And you're able to finish hitching up the dogs and Fenris and can head west along the east way. I'm Jander. also going to uh, bounce out our dopey little Yami. I can do that now. What Ooh. color is he? Yami is going to remain red for the moment. <clears throat> so again, a flame kind of leaps out of Farron's arm into the dopey, drooling form of Yami. And his little stubby wings that just can't quite support him yet. By the time you head out of East Haven, it's nearing on 9, 9 p.m. It is late. But many of you don't want to sleep. You want to get where you need to be. The storm that was going along during the battle has completely stopped. The clouds have cleared, and it is a starry sky. The moon is out tonight while you head out, and it looks nearly full. Continuing west, there's very, very little across the tundra that you see. No fires to the south, none to the southwest, where you know Dugan's hold and good made to be. Or were. 
after a few hours where you can just make out the light of Bryn Shander on the horizon. The all too familiar aurora starts to creep across the sky. And in the last hour traveling to Bryn Shander, it passes overhead. Directly overhead? Uh, north of north of Bryn Shander a bit. Like, you think that if you were to go directly beneath it, you would probably have to go north near maybe Tourmaline. And like, Kelvin's Cairn and all that area. That That's where it passes directly over. Uh, since Zeke hasn't seen this in a while, does he notice anything different from the last night that he saw this? Um, go ahead and make a history check. A nine. The colors seem slightly different. Maybe it's a little further north. It looks real similar, though. But something seems just a titch off. Can I take 20 on this if I'm on the, sh the back of the sled? After examining it for a while, and kind of, if you chat over with your friends, it's the same. It hasn't changed. It's just Zeke not remembering it due to having traveled for what he feels is 40 years. That's fair. As you come in the east gate, it is open. There are 15 militia folk by the gate, blocking the gate. And you can see much more than you've seen previously in any one town, every 10 feet around the wall, someone with a crossbow. Looks like they are prepared. As you approach the gate, a familiar face. Sheriff Markham Southwell. You stop there. You're coming in awfully late. Sure are. As you get closer, he goes, Oh, it's all of you. I'm sorry you didn't understand in the dark. I can't see too well. Please. Come on in. And he motions to the guards, and they all kind of step aside. Heading in through the gate, you have never seen this many people in Brunchander. Almost as if packed to bursting. There are people, every, every house, every building has lights on inside. Every house along the road as you travel in has faces pressed to the windows. No one has come in the city since the refugees arrived. Some people recognize who you are. As you get a little closer, you hear, You, you made it. Hi. And you see the familiar large form of Bardabin. Is Sephic near him? Make a perception check. <laughs> oh, I want it on this. I want Go it on this as well. Absolutely. I'm not rolling that die again. It's a 15. Uh, that's a 16. Neither of you see Sephic. You see a couple other familiar faces. Ronaldo, kind of hanging out near Bardabin, also with a big old stein in his hand. And he goes, oh, hey there. Um, but beyond that, it just looks like a normal townsfolk. Uh, you get a quick, brief look at somebody with blue eyes, and you realize, well, not blue enough. 
Not blue enough. We uh, we got your message and we left as fast as we could. Good job. Thank you. We're glad you're safe. I'm glad you're safe. What happened? Mm. Oh, big mess. Giant dragon. You know how it goes. As you're starting to explain, Zeke yes. and Elena are both tackled. Zeke by Maxwell, Elena <laughs> by Mitch. Elena just just holds Midge real tight and just, you know, just holds tight. Oh my goodness, hello! How was your nominati search? Did you see anything cool? I didn't, I didn't find anything. Unfortunately, we've, we got real busy real quick the last couple days. Um, we've been helping Mem with uh, supplies and such. Nobody's you can seen never or be heard too anything. busy to look for the nominati. Just saying. Yeah, right, yeah, right. I'll, I'll, I'll keep my eye out. Yeah. And the guy with the blue eyes. It, it, devastating good looks. Don't forget, devastating good looks. I've been How keeping does... my eye out, but I haven't seen anyone like that. How does Maxwell seem? This is like the first time we're seeing him since his whole ordeal. Better. He um, seems like he's oh, not as like d down and dark. I, it seems like keeping busy helps him. And he's been keeping quite busy. Great. Yeah, I don't... I haven't seen Mr. Sethic. Don't call him Mr. Is what sure was that? Southwell still around? What, what was that, Sean? Is Sheriff Southwell still around? Uh, yeah, he would have came with, came with you towards the center of town. Yeah, you'd see Carl will kind of walk up to him, kind of straight face, a little solace. Um... Yo, ask him, how many speakers are in Bryn Shander right now? Mm. One, two, seven. Seven. Is there any way y'all could get together, maybe make it aware of a certain individual might possibly be in the area? Uh, absolutely, I can go send word for them to meet. Um, given the hour, they probably won't meet for several more hours, but... I understand. Uh, we can get that going. It would probably be in our best interest to, if anybody sees this individual, to... Let us know immediately. He is very dangerous. Is this is this the man you asked about the last time we saw I saw you? It is. I'll keep an eye out. Your help's appreciated. Bartabin, nosy bartender that he is. I think I saw a guy that looked like that on the way over here. Yeah? Yeah, he was uh, following along with my group. I thought he was just a new person, never seen him before. That's what I saw! That's what I said! I, I, that's, what I, that's what I saw! I saw him with Bartabin! You, you said he doesn't wear a coat, right? Right. He was wearing a coat. Well, he might have been trying to fit in. Mm. That's that what he sense. does. Mr. DM? Yeah. Question? Sure. Do I remember Sefik's scent? Uh, you can make a survival <laughs> check. Okay. <laughs> That's so bad. Shit, you gotta warn me when you do that. That was so bad. <laughs> That was a 16. Senpai. You think you have a pretty good idea. 
Okay, I, um... Can I tuck myself kind of, like, down an alley, kind of, a little, like, out of the way, out of eye, and go into Mastiff form? If you're, if you're trying to do this out of view, you will need to make a stealth check. There are a lot of I eyes mean, in not... town. Oh. oh. Can, so if you... Can you just... Elena, hold your cloak up. <laughs> Shield me. Okay. As, yeah, as soon as she and pulls I... it up... <laughs> <laughs> Mastiff Laurel. Oh, well then. Okay. I can't pet you. I, I should it's have said this. <laughs> Obviously, I should have said this before turning into a dog, but I go, roof, 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 roof. And, Z and I Zeke go, can, like, Zeke trotting can off. understand you. Oh, okay. I'm going to go search for Sephic. Okay. Um, remember, he's wearing a coat, and he's got blue eyes, and he's super cute. Oh, I know. Okay. Do you want me to like tell anybody that you're gonna do that or you'll hear you'll hear me if I find if I get a scent. I will Okay, what's the code word? Because I'm just gonna hear your voice. Oh, uh 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 bananas. That sounds like bananas. I don't know bananas. what a banana <laughs> is, but it's a cool name. <laughs> okay. A banana. Why is it a banana, not a banana, nana, nana, or a bane, banana, 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 banana? I'll tell you when I get back. And Laurel <laughs> dashes off. <laughs> okay. Zeke, Zeke turns to Elena. Ah, uh, Laurel's gonna go look for Sephic, and she's gonna yell, "Banana!" when she finds him. That's but I don't know banana. Why banana? Not banana or banana no, no. or banana no, or banana. -na. Zeke, Zeke, it's 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 sort of like code where code words that don't seem to work in a regular sentence. I have no idea what a banana oh, is. Oh wait, because like we would never say that word because I don't even know what that is. I mean, I have an idea of what it might be, but I don't think it is what I think it is. Mastiff Laurel, please make a survival check at advantage. Ooh, at advantage. Wonderful. Lodeem knows the perfect time to cut us off. <laughs> yeah. He's really good at it. He's like, all right, that was a pause. We're moving the fuck on because this could go on for hours. 19. <laughs> you, you, you keep thinking you catch a whiff of it and it's gone on the breeze. You can't nail down any strong point of the scent at all okay i i try to make a pretty thorough um okay even even doing that i don't too many smells of too many different between people between the roads is what i'm trying to do mm -hmm. and this is a shot in the dark do i smell brimstone no because it's been probably a better part of a day since they've been here. Okay. Well, that's going to probably take me like an hour or two to do, so. What are the rest of you going to do during that time? Very quickly, Midge and Maxwell start to get and look really tired and want to head back to the caravan. You two should head back to the caravan. Don't stay out too long. Get your rest as well. We will. Like I could honestly sleep again already. And they bid you all good night and head back to the caravan. Um. So what are the, what are the rest of you up to? For an hour or two? Uh, Elena wants to go to the speakers, or, or as many speakers that are present. None of them are currently awake. Um, okay. Uh, at which point, uh, I think she's just going to hang, hang with whoever is the closest, maybe, maybe Zeke, actually. 
offer assistance where she can there. Or if anyone needs anything, she's just going to be like in arm's reach. Just going to be keeping awareness up. Very shortly after you all um, have arrived uh, and spoken with Bartabin, uh, Sheriff Southwell went off to try and coordinate uh, the morning's speaker uh, meeting. Um, several of the other folk in the in the square start dispersing. Um, Bartabin being one of the last to to hang around. And Laurel, you come back having no solid leads. So yeah, Laurel comes back, shifts out of Mastiff Forum and reports a lack of finding anything. Much of anything. He's like on the wind. At this point, it's nearing three in the morning. And you all are starting to push, taking a point of exhaustion. Okay, let's go to the caravan. Let's just head to bed. Returning to the caravan, Drengir is on watch on the roof, keeping an eye out. And he nods, it's good to see you back. I was going to head out and go save your asses, but you seems like you had it handled. Heading inside, Saxter is asleep at the table. Uh, he has books scrawled out everywhere, um, none of which have his handwriting last. It seems like he was communicating with Midge's books until he fell asleep. All, all of the books are like the message mm -hmm. books? Okay, wow. You've been worried about us. You head to your respective rooms, uh, or Zeke to the to the uh, no to Zeke, the stables. Zeke had her expand his room, right? And so um, he can and my puppies. You can grab the other six puppies. He's so oh, excited! He has yes, all twelve of his babies. Okay, sorry, we do have to retcon something a little bit because Valen did come with you, Zeke. When Velen was hitching up her dogs, oh yeah, her dogs do not breathe. This is why I don't like her. Laura like leans into Zeke and says this as like she walks. Them. And all across the tundra, like your dogs, you see breath as they're you know running. Nothing. Silently running. Also, Velen is from back home. Like, back home, back, back, home? back home? Back home for me. Oh. Do you, She's like, know these dogs? Is that, like, your uncle or something? <laughs> uh, I don't... No. Uh... <laughs> Uh, no, Velen is not my uncle. Uh, I know of them. Uh, they are a family I'm aware of, but we have nothing to worry about them. And, okay, uh, but it's like a little weird that the dogs aren't... So The, the family uh, is part of the Arcane Brotherhood. Uh, think of, yeah, it, think of it this way. They won't get exhausted. Okay, I guess. And as she's heading off um, for the evening before you all head back towards the caravan, um, you do see three kobolds jump out of her sled, in each one having their own little fur coat with a hood and everything, like scrambling after her. Those are hers too. Yeah, those are, oh, I think, I think they're alive, though, so that's okay. They breathe. Um, they're loud. They are having a snowball fight as they run down the road after Velen, so with each other. 
kobolds. All are. right, well, that was oh. super weird. Maybe I need to get some sleep. It's been a long couple days. Oh well, my our goodness. In Neverwinter, and that's why I never want to go back. Maybe I'm just getting really old. Also, Zeke, uh, Velen is coming with us because we did say that we'd bring her somewhere. We did owe her a solid. She did help us bring down the Shardland Dragon. Even though we broke her out of jail, we still owe her a solid? I don't understand that, but... Well, I don't owe her anything, so if we don't right. want to talk and hang out with her, I could take care of that <laughs> for the group. <laughs> you know, I okay. didn't say yes to anything. That's very so true. True. I'm just think, sleep on it. Maybe we're all just cranky and we just need some good food and some good sleep. Well, we'll have all right food, yeah. In the caravan. Yeah, but like Pharaoh's got the good stuff. So oh, like Pharaoh's got the goods, good. She's okay. got the good goods. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll 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 talk in the morning and if we want like we'll we'll talk about it. <laughs> Alright. Good night, Zeke. As job. you all take to your bedrooms. I'm going to ask, okay, I'm going to preface this. This is not for combat. This is just for a little bit of random order. I would like everyone to roll initiative. There is one more quick thing I want to do before bed, too. Absolutely. I don't know if I want to be first or last. Let's see. 17. Put you all into combat. <clears throat> so, Elena, you got a 17, you say. Uh, Zeke? I, I, I got a 2, but I, I clicked the dice on Foundry, and if you I thought, uh, I thought it would let me put it in. If you right-click it, it might give you the option to update com combatant, um, but I can always do it if you can't. Yeah, Call? it won't let me. Got a six. Okay. Theron? Four. And Laurel. Sixteen. <laughs> Me and Elena, we're with it. Okay, uh, Theron, go ahead and take care of what you'd like to take care of. Yeah, as everyone's going into bed, I just want to... I want to knock on Cole's door. Yeah, a call comes and answers it. Hey, uh, can we talk for a second? Sure. Uh, close the door behind us. I'm just going to sit, like, on your bed or a chair or whatever's there. How's, uh, how, how are you? There's been a lot going on. I... I'm doing the best that I can right now. It's... This is a lot to shoulder for someone your age. It's a lot. I died. That can't help. Uh, I just... I want you to know that if you need... If you just need to vent and have me sit there and shut the hell up while you talk at me, you can knock on my door. Yeah, I appreciate it. And remember, you don't have to shoulder this all by yourself. There's five of us. We're all pretty strong in our own ways. Oh, uh, I've definitely seen... been impressed with... What, 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 what our friends can do. They're pretty great, aren't they? They are. And like you said, we've been through a lot, but... It sucked having you fall when we fought the dragon, but I'm damn sure glad you're back. And well, and yeah, I did just, it because I know you'd all do the same thing. 
we'd all do it to save the rest of us. There's no mm-hmm. difference in me doing it, or if it was you, or Laurel, or Elena. You know, we've got a healthy family here. You're fucking right we do. Shit, I just... I really want to get Cephic. I do. But also, I am... not rushing to find him either. Well, you... You tell me how I can help. I'll help you you any way I can. I guess I fear having to put my sword through his chest again. It really sucked last time. Well, when it comes time, hopefully you don't have to. Yeah, uh, I wish I wouldn't have to. But then again, he was my friend, and I really don't want to put that on my our friends. I mean, it won't hurt me at, at all with how many people he's hurt. I get it. But I just... Uh, want to I, I don't I, I know that's not my friend it's 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 my friend's body but I want peace for my friend's body so bad that I, I just I feel like this eye switch is just desecrated him to no end. Yeah, it, he didn't deserve this either. And Farron's gonna pull out uh, Johnson and the Shatter Spike. Uh, if this is up to you, if you want to hold on to Shatter Spike and keep going with the two-handed thing. We can just trade for a while longer. That's not gonna. I had, I had fun with Johnson. That was a uh, trusty blade. Yes, he stands true in in most situations. Yeah. Uh, so I guess because you have that badass new hammer. I love my hammer. That thing is cool as hell. If if I fall, I you promise me somebody oh. will pick this damn thing up. Oh, I'll yeah. Uh but and I'll I'll hand, I'll hold out Shatter Spike and say then you should take this. That way you can keep. Alright. I will take as good of care of it as I can for you. And I will hold Johnson for the both of us. I appreciate that. All right. Get some sleep. All right. You too, friend. Uh, and I'll I'll give call like a big old pat on the shoulder. And I'm going to head out the door. And this doesn't need RP because I think I know how it's going to go. I'm just going to go sit next to Drengear and watch. I don't think he'll say anything. I'm not going to force a conversation. Sit there for like half an hour and then go to bed probably. When you come out and sit next to him, he goes... <clears throat> Mm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And the half hour passes with a few more grunts between the two of you. And as you get up to leave, he pats you on the back and says, Hey, I've died before too. I saw the thing I wanted most. Peace. Don't give up the war until you're ready. He pats you on the back. back. He pats you on the back as you head down. Yep, and I'll go crash again. Okay. Elena. Completely drained from the battle, you collapse into your bed. 
Tears flow from your eyes as the overwhelming tide of emotion hits you again. Fear, sadness, loss, love, and joy. You start to feel as if you are drowning in your own emotions as you drift to sleep. You open your eyes. You stand in the great hall of Castle Neverember, the very room you were tried and sentenced in. But you are alone. A thin layer of frost coats nearly every surface. You could return as a queen. A brief flash of light blinds you as your sight returns. You see your uncle, Lord Dagulp Neverember. He is encased in ice with a look of fear on his face. You could have vengeance. You feel a weight in your hand, and a large hammer is ready for you to swing. Just follow me. Your eyes snap open and you sit up. You feel a layer of sweat on your skin. She's gonna look, like, sit up, look at her hands. She's gonna look for any kind of sign for a hammer, or a hammer of some kind. Make a perception check. It looked like there was the one in her hand, specifically. Uh, 22? You see no evidence of a hammer? but the hand that was holding it in the dream felt like it was clenching something tight. Uh, Lena's just gonna get up momentarily and, um, if it's like a wash basin of some kind, she's just gonna like splash water on her face, cool down, and then just head back to bed. I need to tell Laurel in the morning. I need to tell them in the morning. Speaking of, Laurel, racked by the day's events, you try to settle in for the evening. You and your friends, your family, stopped an unnatural destructive force from wreaking an untold amount of havoc. You brought your friend, your brother, back from beyond the veil. Deeply conflicted, you drift off. You open your eyes. You are in an unfamiliar place. It looks like the grand hall of a castle. Before you is a throne with a familiar symbol in its back, the crest of Neverwinter. You step forward to see if there is anyone sitting in it. You have dedicated your life. You see Elena sitting on the throne with a delicate crown of ice. She turns to you, her eyes an all too familiar icy blue. Your path has been chosen for you. A wicked smile crosses Elena's face as she passes judgment over a court you hadn't noticed. Follow her to me. You awaken in your bed at the White Lady Inn. Okay, sorry, not that, not the White Lady Inn. That's what I had written, because I thought that's where you were going to rest. <laughs> Back in the caravan, shaking from fear and the chill that has crept into the room. You look at your hand and see it is white. Taking a moment, you focus and you retake your familiar standard form. I sit there for a long time 
looking at Elena's father's ring that she gave me and I just keep on I, I pull it off I, I play with it I just look at it for I don't know how long uh, just feeling it running my fingers over it um, before uh, Laurel puts it back on um, probably shifts into a, like a, a Craig cat like small Craig cat like a, mm -hmm. like a kit yeah and and circles around the bed and falls asleep okay <clears throat> excuse me call having had the fight of your life you begin to build the story that you will pass down. The heroes of the Ten Towns, the agents of Shaled, defeated the infernal machine before it could wreak its havoc across Icewind Dale. Your friends, your family, are heroes. You are a hero. The mixed bag of emotions, fear, loss, pride, joy, wash over you as you drift to sleep. You open your eyes. You are on the deck of the wave render with your family. You see your mother by the helm calling out orders. Suffolk is there, hauling lines. You see him laughing with the crew as they work. This is him as you remember him. Not everything needs to change. A flash blinds you and you blink it away. Everything is frozen. The ship the crew, your mother. Beauty and power will endure. You hear footsteps behind you. You turn and see Sephic as he is now. Icy blue eyes peering through you. This is not a cruelty. You sit upright in bed, now wide awake your heavy breath gently fogging in the cool air as sweat drips from your brow. Yeah, Carl just stands up in the middle of his room and is silent for a moment. And him thinking that some magical force is trying to mess with him. He's just gonna, just gonna, like he's talking to air. It's gonna be, my sword will pierce your chest one day. And I will bask in the visceral that is braid from your body. You will feel my wrath. And he will just stand there. The only thing you hear is the beating of your heart and your own breath. Baron! The emotional ride that you have been on has you exhausted. You were knocked unconscious, healed, killed, and revived. You saved your friends and the Ten Towns from certain doom. You tripped. You never trip. Frustrated, confused, elated, you drift off. You open your eyes. You are hunting with Rindo in the mountains north of your home. Stalking your prey high into the spine, you and your brother silently follow into the snow. The wind picks up, and a drift of snow blinds you for a second. Anything can be preserved. The drifting snow clears, and you see the frozen form of your brother beneath an abominable yeti. Anything can be destroyed. The two forms before you shatter into countless shards of ice. 
choose. You open your eyes in your room. The only sound you hear are that of Fenris snoring, your heavy breathing, and the heart beating in your ears. Is Yami asleep? Yes. I'm gonna ruffle his head and wake him. Oh. Hey buddy, did you did you have a dream? <clears throat> Is Fenris sound asleep? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going... I'm just going to sit there for a minute. I don't know who you are. I don't know why you're playing with this memory. But I will make you regret it. and sit there and I'll wait for a response which probably won't come eventually going back to sleep the only thing that greets you back is the sounds of snores and your own breath Zeke both physically and emotionally exhausted you think on your recent memories one of your closest friends died in front of you you were even giving you were even against trying to revive him. You saw Sephic among the refugees heading to Bryn Shander. Lost in thought, you drift off. You open your eyes. You are on the open tundra. A star filled sky stretches in all directions without even a single cloud. You look up and see the familiar frozen aurora stretching from west to east. Beautiful, is it not? Perfect, frozen, forever. Unable to speak, you look around to find the source of the voice. Nothing. A full moon creeps over the horizon into the sky. I grow ever stronger. A, ble a brief flash of a memory comes to you. The sacrifices are on the new and full moons. Patience. You will suffer soon enough. You awaken in your bed, covered in dogs and your own sweat. Do they all look like they're breathing? Yes. He he'll like s slide back his greasy old man hair and <laughs> uh just kind of like pat their heads just just as they like, you know, Touch three things, see five things. Uh, easy to make a mental note that he will also tell his friends about this in the morning, and then he will attempt to go back to sleep. You all finish your long rest. It is nearing on towards noon uh, about the time you all wake up the only person in the common room is Saxter still asleep at the books I feel bad that no one brought him to bed I feel you do notice that there is a blanket on him now and a pillow under his head. Oh, buddy. Uh, 
uh, Zeke will go up to the curtain and ask for just all of the shit and he'll get to work like uh, with Pharaoh like making it better and mm -hmm. the like smells will slowly go more towards cinnamon and maple syrup and you know the good stuff. bacon bacon <laughs> real real bacon <laughs> The smells of the most amazing food you all can remember or even think of recently come off of what still just resembles what is asked for. Pancakes and waffles come out roughly the same. There is a vague grid on waffles, not so much. Um, bacon, they're weird marbled meat-like strips. Really? It can't even do bacon? Oh. It it looks like a good approximation of somebody that was told about bacon a couple dozen times by several people that experienced it firsthand. It's like we asked for pork bacon and you're giving us turkey bacon. That's what's happening. You are not wrong. Oh. How, however, after Pharaoh and Zeke are through with it, it smells and tastes better than you would expect from a what it should be and the breakfast is delicious uh laurel is actually going to peer at the books around saxter mm -hmm. what's currently written on them uh what languages do you speak oh uh that is i speak common druidic dwarvish elvish orc and sylvan uh you do see a dwarvish book, a common book, and yeah. several books that you do not understand. Um, many of what you can deduce is uh, requisitions, the uh, requesting of owed debt, and preferably in the form of diamonds. Oh. Oh, he's calling in debts for diamonds. Gotcha. For us. Gotcha. I wonder what he did for them. Does it is there like any allusion to what the favor was? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm looking for the for the goods, Lodame. As, as the breakfast is being handed out, you do see that he kind of peeks his head up and it does take a second for his pillow to detach from from his face and then plop to the table and he goes and his eyes get wide he sees you. You're back. I was so worried. We're back. Oh my god. And he gets up and he like hugs each one of you oh, individually and fiercely. Yeah, I hug him back. Zeke slams some bacon in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Is Saxter a gnome or a halfling? No. Oh. So. Uh, how, how has, is Midge and the kids out in the town helping? What, how has it been going in here? It's been crazy. Together? Um, we got, we got your message and we, we sent out as, as many as we could. Um, we sent out the fastest dog sleds and runners, um, to get to as I many towns as possible. Them. Yeah. Weird the first couple times, isn't it? You get used to it. I haven't. So, the, you're, you, you you get the magical stuff. I, I don't. I get books and paper. But, um, it's been crazy. Um, every, every building is full. Every bed is full. Everyone that came from everywhere. Except Care Dineval. Really. They didn't come from Care, Care... No. 
and all like not even word uh, and for those that came from Kaer Kaneg through Kaer Dineval, it was as if they knew nothing and didn't want to believe Rourke I heard Rourke um, the bartender there in Kaer Dineval, yeah. took some people in that were worried okay but I but, mean they're they're fine uh, thankfully but oh, that's, that's concerning that they didn't uh, listen. I, I think the message was sent to the speaker. I I just I don't know what happened from there. Um, DM, yeah. just double checking. Care Dineval is where I felt the elementals. Yes, sir. Coming from the castle, the care itself. Yeah, we haven't met. We've only gone to the bar there. We haven't met the speaker in Care Yeah. I don't think they have. So that's the missing speaker. Mm. Um, very few people from Goodmead arrived. And uh, last I heard, no one from Dugan's Hole. Dugan's Hole just got obliterated. You see that he hangs his head and, and he just looks distraught. He's like, but if it wasn't for you all, so many more lives would have been lost. This is why I hired you. To do good things and help people. And to hopefully not die. And he looks to Farron. I should have thought about it. I should have had diamonds ready. I should have had it to go. If anyone is to blame for what happened and it needing to take longer, it's my fault. I'm so sorry. No, no, nobody can see the future. I didn't know the dragon was going to, or the Nominati was going to trip me when I was trying to get away. The Nominati! Uh, one hour, 27 minutes. Oh. <laughs> I, I didn't know they were going to trip me. If they don't trip me, I would have been fine. I'm, I'm oh, quick. Still talking about. I d I really don't think it was the Nominati, Farron. I think they tripped me. I don't trip. When have you ever seen me trip? The Nominati was in my dream last night. I mean, they're everywhere and they're doing all the things. I they got us. mean they were in your dream? They were in your dream. I think they were in mine too, or someone was. Yeah, there was a voice that was talking about, you know, coming for us. And I'm pretty sure it was Kappa. Because who else would be coming for us if not the Nominati? I don't, I don't know about for me, but whatever was in my dream was evil and toying with me. Mine was toilet too. Well, it sounds exactly like the Nominati. Could what? well be. Right? What was your dream about, Elena? I was back home in the chamber where I was tried. And my uncle was standing in front of me. And a block of ice. And I had a hammer in my hand. And the voice told me to follow it. To chip your uncle out of the ice? Or... I interpreted it... I interpreted it as... I interpreted it as... I was breaking going to him. Smash it and kill him. Is there a throne in this room? There is. It's where I had a similar where dream. father and uncle would pass judgment in court. It's where an audience would happen, it's where the court of law 
where the guilty would be tried. Okay. I yes, I I too saw that rum in my dream. You did. Yeah. And she's and actually Elena looks like squarely at your eyes and just like Yeah, okay. Uh Laurel's face is kind of difficult to read, but um their eyes are worried as she looks at Elena. Do they look back at Elena's eyes? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Because, like, you know, considering the dream and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is it, Let's... Laurel? Well, I, uh... This voice, this voice urged you to follow it. The voice in my dream urged me to follow it. Oh, it also said I could return to be a queen. Uh, <laughs> I had no intention of doing that. Really? I mean, I've not really thought about it at length, but... Well, it's it's good to not aim for that right now. It, it's perfectly fine to not aim for that. Well, yeah, because, like, the, the Nominati right is at her house, so why would she go back? Like, we want to protect her from the Nominati. Yes. Yeah, and, and her uncle is the Nominati, so... Oh, good boy, that's correct. We did talk about this. Yeah, and, and the voice definitely sounded like Kappa to me. I mean... Okay, it um, sounded actually, a little feminine be, to just me. Just for my but... sake, um, I'm just for the sake of this roleplay happening. What did the voice sort of sound like, at least for Elena? Uh, deep and feminine, cold, uncaring. It sounded different to me. But if you did, you hear Kappa though. See. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I don't know if it was the same voice because I can't really, unless you can like hear my thoughts. I can think it really loud at you. But I don't think I know that spell yet. Okay. Well, I I'm pretty sure it was the Nominati. And I'm pretty sure that the Nominati's in your house controlling your uncle. And I'm pretty sure that they're doing something up here. And just... Elena's gonna, while he's doing his thing, just gonna take his little hands and also her little hands. <laughs> She's nine inches shorter. Uh, she uh, takes his hand his hands in hers and just like i believe you I, I i believe it the things that he has done the things that i that have happened to me i'm more than willing to believe something must have taken a hold of him or control of him yeah and then and then they try to kill well they did kill theron so now now it's it's no no zone now we're 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 mm. Speaking of Farron, Farron stands up and he throws a dagger at the food curtain. It sticks into the wall. Insight check. Did I hit my mark? It looks like if it, it was sticking through the curtain into a wall. I'm can I go investigate? Sure. I got a 12 on what the fuck Farron is doing. <laughs> Farron is laser focused. <laughs> yeah. So you, you go over to the curtain? Yeah. You pull it back? Yeah. 
where you used to see a wooden wall with nothing, there is a hazy field, and beyond it is a weird, formless, humanoid figure. The rest of you just see a wooden wall when he pulls back the curtain. Baron, what are you doing? What about? Um... Theron's gonna ask for a glass of water. The weird form kind of turns to the side, and it seems to start to motion towards the uh, towards where the curtain is, and a glass of water appears on the shelf. Oh, okay. Woo! We're good, guys. And I'll pull my dagger out of the curtain. And I'll go sit down like nothing happened. What? What was that? Well, we were talking, and then I saw a figure behind the curtains. So I threw a dagger at it. It's wood. What do you mean there's a figure behind the curtain? I'm assuming... It's just magic. It, there was a cook. Like the in, invisible it's just cook? magic. Yeah, magic is weird. I'm still learning. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, there's a, there's like an actual figure that gives us the food through the curtain. No, 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 no. It's, it's wood. The figure is in the wood? <laughs> you can't be inside the wood. That... What? You, you're magic. You know how this works. He like, he puts the back of his hand on your forehead. Are you feeling okay? Honestly, this is the best I've felt in a long time. Whoa, okay. You see Saxter kind of like, you mean there's been somebody back there the whole time? The whole time. This sounds oh, like some God. Illuminati bullshit, okay? What do you mean I don't there's like the somebody window anymore. behind the curtain? I don't like the, I don't like the curtain anymore. <laughs> I was just sipping on his flask, just looking at everybody. Like, psh. Does, does Farron have any uh, marks on his body? Anything that would say, like, make him sick or think stupid things? He does have the remnants of some bruises that you can see, but beyond that, no. I mean, with you all having bathed him a day or so ago, you would have seen something or there's nothing. Zeke pulls out the book. Wait, we bathed him? Yeah. So there Wait, was, you there bathed was, me? There was a mention of it, and I believe when it was... When did we bathe him? I believe it was called... I did, yeah. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> How were you not there for that? Y'all were going to let me be dirty? Like, Call wasn't going to let me be dirty. <laughs> Call's a homie. Right? <laughs> Zeke's gonna pull out the 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 journal with Midge. Mm hmm Is there a figure behind the curtain? A minute or so goes by. Their bedroom door opens and Midge comes out. Hey, it's the cook. And Saxer looks at her. You didn't tell me. <sighs> It's oh, magic. No. It don't need to explain things. It just works. How come Farron can see this figure and none of us can see the figure? I have no I... idea. Maybe it's have you not he can noticed see the with the Dwergar? Yeah. I just thought you like could feel their like body heat or something. I don't oh. know. I I can see things. That sounds weird. I don't mean it like That's that. That's very Nominati. <laughs> I <laughs> see things predator. you can't see. That's that also kind also of weird. also sounds very sketchy. You're digging yourself a hole here, Farron. I mean... <laughs> okay. So, there is visible light, right, that I see... I can see outside of that. Can I 
Can I make a Nominati check? <laughs> sure. The seven. There's some weird, weird stuff going on. Why are you looking at me like that, Zeke? Well, you see, like, you're you're saying some weird things about like seeing things that aren't actually there, and like. But they are there. But, but like, outside of what we can see, and like. Are... I don't know. It's a little sketchy. I I don't understand. Can I check your ankles? Sure. Zeke's gonna pop underneath the table and check oh. out Baron's oh, ankles. Scandal. Uh, medicine check, please. Uh, thirteen. He's he's specifically looking for something like maybe the Nomini like grabbed his Achilles tendon or something and like. <laughs> um, it's kind of hard to tell because Zeke is so fervently looking. Kind of tickles Farron a little bit, and he gets a little jumpy. <laughs> but you don't see anything for the few seconds you can get him to stand still. He'll he'll crawl back out from underneath the table, and he'll sit down. Just because I can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. I'll be watching you. Why does that work for you and not me? Because I have been looking for them for forever, okay? Oh, I can't see the Nominati. How do you know? Maybe, maybe. Maybe I can see the Nominati. Well, maybe you are the Nominati. And what? you've been seeing them this whole time. So. Is this, is this why we're friends? Are you trying? No, 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 no. So I tripped myself? Well, I don't know. I Maybe, I. well, that's a good point. You wouldn't have brought him back to Brack if, if he was part of the Nominati. I don't. Well, we think didn't so. know. Now he, he can see things. Farron dealt the fire blow to the now. dragon. He's... Always, I could always see things. You could I've always this... see the figure behind the curtain. I never looked for him before. I, I have to be looking for it weren't to we? find it. What? What oh, happened? Yeah. Oh yeah. He dagger? threw a dagger at the wall. That is true. To be fair, Maybe I would have hit the cook in the head. It came out of nowhere. Maybe yeah, that we was should... kind of uncharacteristic. I don't know. Is that characteristic for you? I don't. I don't know. Okay. 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 I will. I will think about it. I think right. he's still a little bit under the Nominati's influence, but. All right. We we need to find Sepik. Oh, yeah, I can do that. What? Do it. As I Zeke says Zeke. that, Drenger's door creaks open. And there's a look of almost dread on his face. Something you've never, none of you have ever seen with him before. And he looks at each of you in turn and says, The bitch was in my dreams last night. It was her. And that's where we're going to take our break. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I knew it was the ice bitch. I knew it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> that bitch. All right. So we will be back shortly. Everyone go hydrate up. Uh, take take whatever uh, time you need. We'll be back shortly. All right, see you all shortly.
And we're back. We rejoined the Agents of Shield, um, as Drengir had come out and said, The bitch was in my dreams. What, what do you mean? I heard a cold, frigid voice. Cold and unfeeling. Said she'd take everything away if I didn't give in. Give in to what? What, did, what was the voice wanting from you? For me to walk away. Well, that means that you're on the right path, then. She can get fucked. <laughs> All right, then. She can here, get here. fucked. <laughs> Love it. F U K T. <laughs> We're all adults here. Legally speaking. <laughs> so. Uh, so you think that was her, Dren Gear? Or. I, no, I have no doubt. She I must feel she, threatened. She might be in line too. I mean, I suppose that could, yeah, I suppose, 
I mean, I wasn't really thinking about the voice being a greater presence than that when I was in my dream, but yeah. I... Now, I'm not now that you pointed it you out, said. my I'm dream was about my dead brother, and she'd probably be the only one to show that to me. Oh, we have to kick her ass. Zeke will push some more bacon towards Farron. Farron will gladly eat it. Well, first step mm -hmm. is to uh, find Sepik, her champion. Oh, oh yeah, I could do that. Um, oh, he's going across the table at uh, Call and just like, what about you, Call? Jews are mine as well. Same cold voice. She threatened to take anything away from you? She attempted to parade my people in front of me. Show me my mother. Though she was beautiful and strong, leading her people. Showed me Suffolk. The way he was when he was with my family. And then she showed me him as he is now. And tried to speak of him as if he wasn't desecrated or like it was a gift that he was that way. And my response was basically like our friends here, get fucked. Hey. 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 So I was the only one who dreamed of the Nominati. I guess that's very on par. It's very in character for you. Yeah, okay. I'm starting to think maybe it wasn't the Nominati, but... But if Oral and the Nominati are connected, like, we have gone over... Maybe! So it's all one yeah. the same. Awesome. I was also going to say, if it makes you feel better, but I don't think being made feel better about Nominati, Oral... Well, we know that Oral is not the Nominati, but we don't know that the Nominati isn't working with her. So, like, that's true. Zeke, as long as we work together, I feel like both of them will get their time. Mm. Yeah. Are we ready to know where, yes. where Sephic is? Oh, oh. I don't know. Are we emotionally ready? Actually, yeah. Elaine's going to just gently side eye and maybe reach out a hand towards Call. You ready? Sure. I don't want to sound rude, but I don't know if we get the luxury of being ready. The sooner the better. Well, I mean, I could just wait, like, 20 minutes if we needed to, like, use the bathroom or take a drink. Like, I'm not I'm not talking about, like, waiting a week. I mean, just, like, right this second or, like, in an hour. No, let's, let's do this. <laughs> no time's as good as the present. Mm -hmm. Laurel sips on some terrible taste and coffee. <laughs> no, it's much better after Pharaoh got through with it. Oh, right. Okay, right. <clears throat> Probably like nice, nice hints of like pumpkin. I want to give my player inspiration to Pharaoh for good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> she does have a stat block. I guess you could in theory. 
She's just she's not a combat companion. So. But just in case, like friggin' die. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't. <clears throat> okay, so, I guess whatever whatever I have to do. Zeke starts up the ritual. Uh, gets everything set. And you see as Zeke goes crisscross applesauce on the floor. All weird finger things. The room dims. Ever so slightly. And you start to see points of light around Zeke. Stars. Zeke, go ahead and roll your ability check. Okay. DC is 20. pretty high. Okay, I'm gonna use the one with the fancy dragon on it. I don't even need the inspiration. It's a 22. You all watch as Zeke concentrates. And the stars seem to coalesce in front of him and form a weird warping. And for the briefest second, you can see through it. You see Bryn Shander. Zooms in. You see the caravan. And you see Sephic leaning on the stables, maybe 30 feet from the caravan, just waiting. Zeke, you take one point of exhaustion. And you cannot use the ability again for seven days. Oh my gosh! You see, we we did you see that? You just, we just, we gotta go. We gotta go right now. Where? where He's where outside. He? He's okay, literally right you. outside. Following you. Yeah. I'm out the door. Ooh. I got calls go. already. Up. Yeah, we're we're out the door. I'm gonna say calls probably way ahead of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Walk right. You all run outside. Uh, make mm. perception checks. If he's not here. <laughs> oh, that's pretty bad. Mm. 26? Oh. 23. Uh, the 20s and above. Especially Zeke, because you saw where he was standing. He's not there. There are <gasps> footprints, and there is a dagger in a letter. Oh, well, it, says, so grabs it. it says, see you soon. Can I get on the tracks? Or try to, at least? Yeah. You felt you get the faintest smell of brimstone. Uh, Mother son of a bastard. Counterspell. <laughs> Counterspell. Uh, roll a wisdom check. <laughs> <laughs> I have it too, but I know. Come on, come on. <laughs> Fitting, it's like, it's an eight, I think. Farron, you yeah, take one point of psychic yeah. damage as you try to counter a spell that is... No, you don't. <laughs> I couldn't stop him. I couldn't stop him. We're too late. <laughs> I don't okay. know um, how this guy is so fast. Soon? See you soon. The audacity. Zeke. With that same perception check, looking around, trying to see where he might have gone, just over the wall to the west, you see a full moon rising. Can, can you remind me what that means? The sacrifices to Oral are made oh. on the new and full moon. Right. Um, and I think I have it written somewhere, but it's quicker if you tell me wh what are the the smaller cities do sacrifices? Or it the was first? it was Brent, it, not Brent Shander. Sorry, Dugan's Hole. Good, which is demolished. Mm -hmm. Right, Dugan's Hole's a crater. Cared, 
Carnage? Nope, Dinner Dugan's Hall. Hole, Goodmead, and Targos. Those three. Yep. Okay, and both Goodmead and Targos Dugan's... are... Goodmead Good and Dugan's, Dugan's, Hole Dugan's Hole are Hole. craters. But I thought that last night we were told that the people from Goodmead made it to Bryn Shander. Only a few of them. Uh, some? Yeah, yeah. some of them. Okay. None of them from Dugan. So Hole the Hole. only city that would, or the only town that would be doing sacrifices is Targos? Right. But they should all be here. So. Well, I don't we think Lady Duvessa is going to, or Speaker Duvessa is going to allow that in Bryn Chander. Um, so. You know, right. it's a it's a full moon, and um, you know, the the sacrifices happen on those days, and if he's here, he's here for the sacrifices, right? So, who's who do we gotta go talk to about making sure that doesn't happen? Maybe we can catch him. Maybe we should get an audience with the speakers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's also make sure that everyone's safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and find him, too. A knock at the door. The uh, door. Well, no, you you guys outside. are you're outside. Okay. We're um, you, you hear a footsteps. Yeah, you hear footsteps <laughs> approaching, and, like, up, they start to walk up the stairs, and then you hear Sheriff Southwell kind of, oh, you're outside. I was coming to get you. The meeting is starting soon. What what meeting? Uh, the speakers. Yeah. Um, can I? Can can Zeke make a quick intelligence check because Jackie just put stuff together, but I don't know if Zeke would put this together. Uh, yes, but what did Jackie put together? Jackie thinks he's gonna try to kill the speakers. Sir, you can roll. Uh, you can. Rolling. But I don't know if Zeke would come to that conclusion. He's not he's not like particularly intelligent. Yeah, roll an intelligent check. Uh seventeen. Wait, is this an ability check? I think I have disadvantage on these. You do. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, hang on. Let me roll that. <laughs> Big old disadvantage. That is a uh, seventeen again. That was the same roll. You're not quite sure who would be the target? But people are in danger if he is here. Okay, he won't he won't sound any alarms. He's not sure. But Jackie is sounding alarms. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's head is like a fire department right now. <laughs> yes. But Zeke can't get it together fast enough. <laughs> so uh you all are no, okay, that's not what I want. This, if 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 it will let me, it's not letting me. Okay, so over here, as awful as that looks, that is where at the X, that is where the caravan is. This large <laughs> building is okay. the council hall where uh, Sheriff Southwell is leading you. Okay. You all, you brought there. He's like. Um, Go on, head in. I'll be right behind you. And it seems like he's just kind of keeping watch as you all walk in. Just for the sake of it, can I insight check him? Sure. Just paranoia. It's nothing special. I think it's a 12. Let me double check. It is not. It is an 11. He seems on edge and keeping a watch after you all head in he closes the door and then he uh, gestures towards uh, a large set of double doors that are partially open you can hear um, quiet talk on the other side heading in you see speaker Duvessa listen this is no good, especially with everybody here. It's pretty dangerous. And, you know, 
We're not going to be having any of these sacrifices going on. Oh, you've all arrived. Please, come in. Find any seat. seat. Sit wherever you can. What what seats are available? Is this like a mishy mash? Like we have to sit by? We're all like apart in the room, or are there like five perfectly placed seats? Just curious, from you know, just in case we get ambushed. It is a uh, kind of like in a round almost with a small table between. Uh, there are chairs on the walls that are empty, and there are a few seats at the table empty. Three Aaron's specifically. Not gonna sit. Yeah, Zeke's Aaron's gonna sit sitting. against the wall. Elena's gonna sit where she can see all the speakers in her peripheral. Uh, it does look like that the table is set up, so if you sit at the table, you can see everyone else at the table. I lean up against- Laura leans up against the wall. Um, we- we got your message, and, uh, we- we really appreciate the warning. Um, many of these other towns, and she gestures around, and you see, oh, oh boy, you see Speaker yes. Trovis, the Trovis. silver dragonborn that used to be a drunkard. You yes. is see, he, is he sober? He's sober, and he gives you all um, like a friendly nod. If uh, we've done anything, we saved that guy's life. Care Conig, right for Trovis? Speaker yes. Trovis is Care Care Conig. Um, you see, like, so he's a, it's a human, a human male, and he's, you know, he seems to, like, have kind of sunken eyes, he's got a bit of a beard, and brown hair going on, he's wearing some furs, looks kind of gruff, and he nods to you, and, um, Speaker Shane says, uh, this is Speaker Nerth Maxildenar of Targos, and next, and behind him, you see a red tiefling, male in kind of armor and he just kind of gives you all like a who the hell are these people kind of look like you you can feel disdain on this man and this is his militia captain Captain Scath uh, what from was East the speaker's name I'm sorry Nerth Maxildenar let me oh, get these in oh okay Nerth Maxil how do I spell this I'm sorry. These names are crazy, <laughs> right? Maxil. Maxil. Dunar. There's yeah. There's a few in there. And he's from Torgos. Targos, yeah. Captain Scath, also from Targos. 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 Uh, she gestures to another human male. Um, he he's got a nice smile, a bit of a long beard. He's wearing one of those like hats that has the flaps on the sides. She says, "Uh, this is Speaker Danith Whalen of East Haven." He's like, oh. "Hey, call me Danny." Speaker and Danny. Behind him, you see another red tiefling male, but this one looks a little bit more proper. Like he carries himself like a, like an officer, soldier type person. Uh, this is Captain Scython. He's, he's uh, kind of taken the place of Captain Imdra while she's guarding East Haven. Ah. Um, you see another familiar face. You see all of Essa Untapur from Goodmead. She's like, it's good to see you all again. I'm, I think, de facto, de facto speaker of Goodmead. Oh, she's the one that we wanted to be the speaker of Goodmead. Mm-hmm. All of Essa. Elena's gonna flash a little bit of a smile towards her direction. Um. And I'm... lastly, there is a half orc male she gestures to. This is uh, Speaker Oris Matthew. He's uh, the Speaker of Tourmaline. Uh, the Speaker of Lonely Wood uh, decided to stay behind and help help with the the town, so they have unable to make it. Um, we just didn't hear from the speaker of Cairdinval speaker speaker Seaver no response Where's can I app? do a general sus check of all the speakers absolutely insight check please wait so there's only six here uh yes well uh, seven if you count uh, all of Essa uh 
no, a 14 I was counting on insight. Her. 14 on insight. All right, let me put... Okay, so... All right, let me so make sure. Speaker Trovis. Speaker Mac I think I'm missing my list from Bremen. So oh, Bremen, bad. yes. We don't have Bremen. Yes. So the speaker from Bremen is there. I don't have their name off the top of the That's head, okay. but you are no, introduced okay. to them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Um, Baron, uh, Captain Scaff. He seems no good. <laughs> with with that insight check, like he's he's real sketchy. Kind of eyeing people in almost a predatory way, but not like it's more like how can I take advantage of these people? Mm -hmm. Does Nerf Maxildenar he looks gruff and grumpy, you said? Yes. Um, we, we're, we're here at, at your behest, um, agents, um, you said you'd like to speak to as many of us as possible. That's correct. What happened? There was an individual in the area, um, that is extremely dangerous. I provided uh, Sheriff Southwell with his uh, description, but he is very hard to track. He moves with the wind pretty much. I, we can we can pass his uh, his image and a description of him to all the guards at all the gates, um, all the guards on the streets. And do you have guards here? Yeah, you... he's he's in the city. Oh. I don't think the guards outside are going to do much help. Well, we can we can pass along to everyone in the town as well and uh make sure. Uh, the sooner the better. Mm. She nods to to the sheriff who's by the door and he's it's being passed around to everyone yeah it is adorable gruff shale scar so there is a dwarf at the table a his, dwarf okay. his name is adorable adorable gruff shale scar <laughs> he's old looking too like fully white haired Big bulbous red nose. What is Bremen known for? Bremen? We haven't been there. No. Not much. <laughs> okay. So, what happened in East Haven? We dispatched a dragon. Are they at yours? No. Uh, this was a creation, uh, by some unsavory Jorgar. Uh, they, they were looking to overtake the Ten Towns, uh, for their own gain, and had created this dragon out of Shardalin in order to serve that purpose. At and the mention of it being made of Shardolin, everybody kind of, like, gasps and looks a little more fearful than they did. So we confronted the Dwargar King. Um, you don't have to worry about him. Uh, unfortunately, the dragon was also activated. We took care of the dragon as well in East Haven. Well, we are most thing and spe standing up. Speaker Trovis is just like <laughs> you all. You're good people. I knew it. I knew when I met you. You saved my town. 
I mean, oh, that's Danith Wayland. Sorry. You saved East Haven. That's you're just great people. Yeah, I glad that we there was minimal damage uh, and that people were safe. I'm glad that people listened. Uh, thank you all for rushing your your towns out of their homes and therefore keeping your homes safe. Speaker Shane nods. It's like, you all have uh, been helping us greatly around. Um, you were becoming quite trustworthy, and if you say it's dangerous and we need to evacuate, we're going to do it. And this is just, just one more thing that you all have done for us. I, you know, when I received the, the letter from that strange little man you work for, I had, honestly, I, I thought you were just going to come up here and get yourselves killed. <laughs> Instead, here you are, saving our lives. Thank you. Fortunately, there seems to be a lot going on in this, Dale. We <sighs> might have dispatched one problem, but I feel like we may have threw all of our fish into one barrel and kind of made it easy for the next. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's imperative that we find this man who is quite dangerous. Not only would he pose a great threat to the remainder of the people who live here, but... He's here. He is in this town right now with everyone. Here that we find him. And he is a murderer. He is the Ice Witch's champion. So Everybody at that kind of just looks around. Their face is going ever so slightly pale. But uh, uh, as far as Duragar go, you do have allies uh, among the Duragar. Uh, Duragar who wished to establish trade with the Ten Towns and uh, uh, Call, do you have that, that letter from Grandolfa Lutzgark? Oh yeah, you grab it. You yeah. dig down into the haversack and pull it out. So you go like shoulder deep in this bag that's like only el should allow you to go to elbow deep and you pull out the rolled up parchment, hand it to Speaker Shane. And she reads through it and it's just like confusion that leads to understanding, that leads back to confusion and she passes it around for the other speakers to read and she's like, hey, uh, you know, I never thought we'd be uh, establishing trade with the Underdark. Um, very few places can claim that. This could help bring some life back to the Dale. Trade. Well, ultimately, hopefully we get the pass back opened. So, hmm. uh, so, yes. You all can get back south again, too, and... Hmm. Travel back and forth. <clears throat> Have you all considered unifying? Hey, I mean, you know, we're about as unified as people who live in the tundra can be. And I mean, at the moment, we're kind of all in one set of walls, so that's pretty unified. I mean, as you rebuild. Will you continue to have separate ten towns, as it were? Oh, sort of, yeah. I mean, we do have uh, the Council of Speakers. Uh, here we all, you know, meet for the greater good of the Dale as a whole. Ah, <laughs> uh, what's a weekend? <laughs> Vacation? Well, um... 
yeah, the best thing that we can do now is find this man. Hey, um... Is... Is this the one who supposedly killed those uh, few folk that uh, yes. snuck out of the those towns? Yes. Yep. That also being said, um, sacrifices do not work. Mm. You do hear a scoff from Speaker Maxel Benar and Captain Scaff. I am shooting daggers with my eyes. Daggers. At both of them. Captain Scaff. I'll split my eyes up if I have to. Takes out a dagger. Kind of picks at his fang a little bit with it. Puts his dagger away. Doesn't seem to care. Carl walks up behind him and like grabs his shoulder and squeezes. And, like, Ow. keep your swords to yourself, friend. Ooh. He looks down at your hand. Brushes it off. Do that again. And, you and you'll be in floor. my jail. Try to put me in there. Turns away from you. you. <laughs> As I was saying, sacrifices do not work. Yes, Perhaps you feel some form of acknowledgement. Yes, perhaps you feel that something has been lifted and that maybe makes you feel lighter. A life is lost and unfortunately, unfortunately, they are brought back. They do not aid the situation. On our way here, my comrades and I had found someone that may have been a victim of that and was brought back. We fought it. So, that being said, this is all happening behind Elaine. <laughs> so, so, council, everyone here, everyone present at this council. Mm. You're free to do what you like. You're free to have, you know, your own autonomy, as it were. But unfortunately, in the unification of the Ten Towns and in rebuilding, some beliefs do need to be discarded, and one of them is sacrifices. I mean, here in Bryn Shander, I, the most we've ever done is maybe light or heat. You know, just sacrificing a little bit of comfort Captain Scath spits on the floor. Evil bitch only understands death. The sacrifices are to show her what would happen if she comes to us. Theron's gonna lean That's off the, the wall. Awkward way of thinking. Maybe you should be next. And at this, like, Olena's like, Baron, how has that worked out for you, Captain Skull? Has the winter ended? I've been fine. And your people? The people that you are sworn to protect? They're doing all right. They could be doing better. Everybody could always be doing better. Everybody Couldn't could. you be doing better, too? Believe me, I've had better. This is one of my better days right now. Theron's getting hot. <laughs> Theron's getting real fucking hot. Are you proposing that there's a sacrifice tonight? The lottery is yet to been held. There is no lottery in Bryn Chander. Speaker I'm Shane sure Speaker echoes Dubessa what you say. Has, there has is said. no lottery in my town. I threw in the then wrong we will accent uphold... there. That's okay. Then we will uphold Bryn Chander's laws here. Speaker Shane nods to, to each of you 
There will be no death. If anyone is sacrificed, put outside, I hold you too. And she points to Captain Scath and Speaker Maxeldenar. I hold you too responsible. They both kind of just look at each other, shake their heads. No response. Carl's going to walk outside before he fights this man. Uh, Elena's going to do sort of like a kind of a nonverbal check-in with everyone. Just like, is there anything else we need to say? Is there anything else we need to say? Like, to the rest of the group. Uh, Farron's a little red in the face. He's not happy, but he respects your stance. She's like, like, you know, mouthing. Zeke, as Call walks outside. Okay. In the distance, and it's. You're almost not sure. You hear a scream. He immediately jumps up, like, over the top gnome hop out of his chair uh, hoping to get the group's attention um, and he just yeah he follows after call out the door it's call here this roll the perception check uh, Laurel reaches over to Farron's shoulder and kind of gives him a couple pats and kind of like come on pat pat towards the door it's a 12 you didn't hear anything. But you do see Zeke running by you, and Zeke, feel free to say whatever. I'm going to assume that they know that Zeke doesn't do stuff like this unless something's caught his attention. Yeah, and, if I see he's... Zeke running, I'm running. Oh, yeah. Him. Yeah, but he's not going to interrupt the... the he, he knows well enough not to interrupt the... the Blaine is going to politely bow out and just, like... Um, Please resume. Baron's perceptive, but he's also angry right now. I mm -hmm. don't know. I, that's up to you, I guess. I don't know. If, I mean, if he hears or not. You would at least have seen Zeke rush out. Like, I mean, okay. he, he, he was yeah. not being stealthy, sneaky. It was, so. it was loud. His chair toppled to the floor. And he burst through the doors. Farron would follow, and on the way out, would just like point at Captain Scaff on the way out, just like fucking watching you. As you get out the door, as the, as the door closes, like it's just a mutual like flipping off of each other. <laughs> as soon as Zeke got outside of earshot of the speakers, I'm assuming Call would be like the next person behind him. Yeah. He'd be like, I heard a scream. We gotta go. Yeah, Carl's just booking it, like, right behind Zeke. Tim. And whatever direction I thought I heard it in, that's where he's going. You heard it from the southwest gate, which is very close to the stables and the caravan. As you approach, you as you start to get closer, you hear another scream, and it is... It sounds terrified. You start to hear the murmur of a small crowd as you get closer to the gate. And looking on the wall, it's a man none of you recognize. But he is staked to the wall by an ice sword through his heart. We need to look for uh, him now. I oh. Farron's gonna cast jump on himself mm -hmm. and jump up to the wall and damage or not, he's gonna pull the sword out and we gotta get this guy down. Okay. Um You take three points of ice damage. Laurel, do you do you smell him? Is he anywhere uh, near us? <laughs> uh yeah, 
Uh, yeah, I turned into a mastiff. Mm -hmm. Do I smell him? It smells fresh, but not. There's no path away. Farron, just with your passive perception while you're up on the wall, you look west through the southwest gate. Where you all have seen the statue of Dristo Erden outside, you see a line of figures approaching the town. Familiar figures. Beacons of blue icy light <gasps> pouring out of their face. At least 12. And in front of them is a lone man with his sleeves rolled up. Tell Call. I'm here for him. And that's where we're going to end tonight. Oh. <laughs> I knew you were gonna do that. Oh. Over my dead fucking body. Oh. Again. You son of a oh, it's gonna be such a good fight. I'm gonna stab oh. your fucking diff dick off, Suffolk. Oh. <laughs> oh. Meanwhile, Sean's sitting there in silent rage. <laughs> silent still rage. <laughs> oh, I, you know, every week I'm like, there's no way this game can get better. There's no way. Like, that was does. the peak. It does. And then it does every week. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Baron was wow. so close to assaulting Scath in the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Like, Matt was getting angry. I was like, oh, fuck. I'm I... going to break this guy's neck. I hate Scaff. This is the second, so, you know, uh, this is the second time I've played this game with Ludame as the GM, and I hate, hate Scaff so much. He's <laughs> he lucky that Suffix here, because he was on the top of my list yeah. right now, but Suffix here, so that kind of... Right. I wasn't going to punch him in his stupid tiefling face. Stupid <laughs> tiefling face. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, when uh, Elsa but Mommy are like totally rages and breaks free, she's gonna be freezing him first for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy. Uh, in particular. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs>